So now that Megamind is officially the defender of Metrocity, <clears throat> I mean, Metro City. Well, actually, I think I got that right. Megamind, defender of Metrocity. We now see him stopping bad guys instead of being one, just as we see at the beginning of the movie when he stops the Go Fish gang from trying to steal the diamond encrusted koi loaned from the Beijing Water Palace. And this is also when we get notified that Minion is no longer called Minion due to a cease and desist order from a popular fast food chain called Mr. Minion's Meatsicles. He can no longer be called Minion. Uh, so stupid. And so now he's called old chum oh i mean are you kidding me we'll get to it in my review but let's get back to the summary one of the bad guys ends up throwing his sawfish to the aquarium breaking the glass and letting a huge shark come out but megamind is quick to react and turn him into an ice cube then as the bad guys are escaping they're inside a fish tank get it fish tank i guess it's not funny but they end up blowing megamind and minion i mean old chum with water and then Megamind counters by throwing the ice cube inside the fish tank blowing up the shark and then getting his bazooka portal gun because the fish tank is going to run over some kids and then he transports them back into the aquarium where they end up arresting them so this is like the normal day in the life for Megamind now that he is a hero stopping bad guys now back in normal life Roxanne is still reporting and she's just going through the motions not enjoying it and this is when we get to meet the new character of the movie Kaiko Morito who represents the new age youth that are wannabe influencers as she is the president of megamind's number one streaming online fan club mega watch oh my god way too long but in the meantime megamind gets awarded the key to the city and he hands it off to minion i mean old chum to take care of it who feels neglected in all of this as he goes back to the car he runs into roxanne and ends up talking to her telling him how he feels undervalued to which she responds you should ask for a promotion to be sidekick and speak from the heart then we cut back to megamind who meets the new wannabe influencer and she ends up telling him that she's his social media manager and image consultant to which he responds by giving her a flash grenade. That's actually kind of funny. But then we see Old Chum speak from the heart, which just means there's a huge boombox in his chest putting on music, and then he comes up with the most bland and robotic negotiation speech to which Megamind declines, and then they go their separate ways. Now we get to meet the villains of the movie, which are the most generic rip-off Fortnite characters I've ever seen that are super unoriginal. I mean, let's go through them. First, we have Storm from X-Men. <coughs> I mean, first we have Lady Doppler, which is the evil witch of weather. Then we have Peer Pressure, Master of Hypnotism, Behemoth, Burning Hunk of Burning Rock, and Lord Nighty Knight, the Duke of Darkness. And they're all witnessing Megamind get the key to the city, which incites them to go see him. And then all of a sudden we see that they're in a jail cell and they just decide to leave. And this would have been a cool scene if it didn't feel so unoriginal. I mean, Lord Nighty Knight feels like he's straight up copying from Green Lantern here. Peer Pressure is straight up using the force from Star Wars to hypnotize the guard. And Lady Doppler uses her storm capabilities to conjure up a tornado to blow behemoth into a bunch of pieces of rocks to get into the vents into the other side which to me seems a little bit like the metal alien thing at the end of the day the earth stood still but i admit that's a little bit of a stretch anyways the moral of the story is that they get out and now they're going to go see megamind meanwhile megamind calls roxanne on a hollow projector from star wars i mean from his own hollow projector i mean gosh this movie's getting so unoriginal panicking making it seem like it's a do or die situation to which roxanne panics and goes to Megamind's lair to see him and then she realizes he's just having trouble with the toaster but while they're talking they do hear the intruder alarm go off which he thinks is minion I mean old chum setting it off but then runs into the doom syndicate which happens to be happy to see him because they think that he's pretending to be a hero instead of actually being a hero to which he leans into because he doesn't feel like he can take them on and then Roxanne comes out and the whole thing is very awkward and then I get confused because apparently she knows who the doom syndicate is they know who she is and I'm just like how how is this pop I'm so lost right now all right whatever I guess they do but Megamind and Roxanne go back into the kitchen to have private talk and he he tells them that he started the Doom Syndicate and hired all these people and then he kind of ditched them because he didn't want to share the spotlight. I mean, so basic, you know, I mean, it's just so like no development, just like let's get a quick exposition and get through this. Anyways, they say they're here to complete phase two, which no one has any idea what it is. But before initiating phase two, they decide to go on a crime spree. And that just means that they're going around the city, destroying buildings and monuments. And Megamind has to act like he's enjoying what he's seeing. And this is when he runs into Kaiko again and saves her life from a falling object and she wants to end up helping him but he tells her to just go off home and tells her that he is undercover 
cover. And now when he catches up with the Doom Syndicate, they put him to the test by making him rob a bank to see that he still has the evil within him. So then he enters the bank and makes this whole awkward situation because they think he's the defender of Metrocity, I mean Metro City, and he's kind of forced into this weird position and then Kaiko comes in clutch and saves him by saying it's a drill and making it seem like it's a YouTube video for school or something like that, which just saves Megamind's image and buys him a little bit of extra time with the Doom Syndicate. Now back with Megamind back at his lair, he tries to go to bed and then it ends up seeing that there's a disco party happening at his place. A straight up disco party. And you know who ends up showing up at this disco party? The fish criminals from the beginning of the movie and this could blow Megamind's cover because they know that he's a true hero and not pretending to be one. So Megamind puts on a super loud song, they end up having a dance battle, not as good as the dance battle in White Chicks I must say, but they do have a dance battle and then ends up having my favorite scene of the movie when he hides in this like hallway full of Megaminds and then he turns this guy into an ice cube. I, this scene has to be from another movie, I swear, it seems so similar like I've seen it before, but I think it was the best scene in the movie. And then he turns the rest of them into ice cubes and in the meanwhile, Minion, or I mean old chum, is applying at some disgusting old diner for a job. And then the next morning, Roxanne comes in with some disgusting muffins, asking what happened. And then the Doom Syndicate walk in again, and this is when he gives the explanation to Phase 2, which simply is their plan to put Metrocity, or Metro City, onto the moon where they would make a force field around the city, and they would have rockets underneath it, blast it off, and then move it onto the moon. Man, why am I getting flashbacks to Despicable Me right now? Roxanne is shocked and she's like, this is impossible. How would you even have the time to put rockets under the city? And then he's like, well, actually, we already did. And then he shows her that everything is already in place, but he acts as if he doesn't remember the password to the launch control room. And the Doom Syndicate call his bluff and give him an ultimatum saying that we launch tonight or they're gonna destroy the city. So Megamind and Roxanne try to go back to meet Minion who created this donut shop, reinvented the whole thing from a disgusting diner into a successful colorful donut shop and Megamind's plan is to try to show him that he values him as a friend more than just a colleague and that he's sorry pretty much an apology but right before he does it the loser employee from that store as we've seen earlier says exactly what he wanted to says before he says it so it kind of just ruins the moment and then Megamind just leaves super sad saying it's okay he's gonna face the doom syndicate on his own and just tells his friend minion Ugh. I mean Old Chum, I hate that name dude, Old Chum is disgusting. To be happy. Then he tries to get the Doom Syndicate by getting them to pose for a picture and then getting them in his portable prison. But his robot ends up malfunctioning and then they beat the crap out of him, but he's able to escape in his like ejectable chair. And Roxanne and Kaiko are able to find him because apparently Kaiko put like this device in his Megamind pin that they're able to track. And then they find him in an alleyway having a midlife crisis, to which Kaiko gives him a pep talk to get his motivation back. And then Minion shows up out of nowhere, I mean perfect timing by the way because he literally comes out of nowhere, and in the meantime the Dune Syndicate is trying to break into the launch control room and it's gonna take them about an hour, so Megamind and the other three of them team up to try to come up with a plan to stop the Dune Syndicate by creating a diversion where Megamind is gonna distract the Dune Syndicate while Old Chum goes through the vents and gets into the control room. But before all of this happens, I swear to god we get a straight up commercial for everything city. Is this a real store? Do you have to comment below. Is this a real grocery store? Because it straight up feels like a plug for this everything city market. And they have this music montage, which is totally unnecessary for the plot. I mean, this is the most pointless scene in the movie, but you know what, man? It is fucking weird to the point I enjoyed it. It's just them running through the grocery store, getting supplies before they fight. And it's so pointless. Anyways, right before the Doom Syndicate press the launch button, they're arguing who is the leader and who gets to press the button, and then Megamind appears on the screen and gets them to come outside to fight him, and this is when Minion gets to go through the vents to get to the control room, but he has to go through a bunch of obstacles. Now, this is the stupidest scene in the movie. Megamind fights the Doom Syndicate with a tennis ball launcher. Hey, this is dumb, right? Hey, so stupid. This doesn't make any sense. How does this make any goddamn sense how is it that storm who controls weather and can just lightning shock him just get defeated by a tennis ball to the face how does behemoth get scared of tennis ball bro this shouldn't affect him at all how the hell does the green lantern guy does not come up with like a huge baseball back and whack those tennis balls back to megamind the only one that's here is peer pressure so 
f him. Anyways, Minion gets interrupted by the fish criminals from the beginning of the movie, and so he's not in time to stop the launch, so the city has the force field around it, and it's flying up towards the moon, and the people are panicking, and Megamind has to fight each of the Doom Syndicate, but Minion, in the meantime, even though he got through the obstacles, he lost his bodysuit and fishbowl, so he's on limited time right now as he enters the control room. But don't worry, because Minion actually ninjas his ways back to the launch button and stops the launch, but now they're in free fall, and Megamind has to fight all the Doom Syndicate. He quickly gets rid of Lord Nighty Knight by straight up pulling an Arnold Schwarzenegger Total Recall move where he like duplicates himself digitally. You remember that scene from Total Recall. Then he cements peer pressure and then he attaches a cord to Lady Doppler and gets her to electrocute herself and then Roxanne comes in clutch with the fire truck and kills Behemoth but Lord Nighty Knight comes back for a second round and guess who gets rid of him? Kaiko of course she comes in clutch with the flash grenade from earlier and gets rid of Lord Nighty Knight and now they have put back the city backwards but you know what it is what it is they saved everybody and now Roxanne becomes mayor they team up to have like a Justice League type team and they put the bat signal up into the sky and then the movie ends but wait there's more because then we get a scene where we see the Doom Syndicate back in a jail cell arguing about who the leader is and then we get introduced into the possible villain for the next movie if they ever have one called Machiavelli who says he's gonna make Megamind regret leaving the villainhood. And to be honest, I think this was the best part of the movie. That says how much I like this movie. But let's get into the review. I think this movie is trash. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. And it really boils down to three main points. So let's start with the first one, the villains. Look, in my opinion, I think the first Megamind had a fantastic villain, a very underrated animated villain in Titan. Not only was he a great twist villain, but he also represented incel culture. He symbolized weak men. And I love his character arc in the movie because we see someone that was such a loser and then was given ultimate power and you get to see that maybe that's not the best thing giving someone with that much insecurities and who is that weak mentally that much power there was meaning behind that villain but these villains are just so generic and like i said they feel like ripoffs of fortnite they don't stand for anything meaningful and then like i said earlier they don't feel original you got lord nighty knight who looks like a fortnite character that has the green lantern powers she is straight up a ripoff of storm from x-men i mean come on a black woman that controls weather that's storm come on. Behemoth is just a thing from Fantastic Four but with lava and then the only semi-original one is Pierre Pressure who just isn't that memorable either. And since there's so many of them, none of them stand out. It's not like you have one villain that's iconic and we can focus on. No, you. there's no direction. There's no one to focus on since there's so many of them and they can't even decide within themselves who the leader is. So how can we, the audience, care who which one is the coolest one or have them feel like a force of nature? It doesn't feel that way because that's the last thing I want to say on this, guys. They introduce them terribly. What a bad villain introduction this movie has. You guys know that I'm a huge Filmento fan. He has a great YouTube channel and I love his book, The Anatomy of Film Perfection. And in there, there's a chapter about villains and how to introduce an antagonist. And there's three main ways you can do it. Number one, a villain's intro can be built on the buildup of the hero. And what that means is that you build up the hero in the beginning part of the movie, like in Terminator, showing him how badass he is. And then you have the villain come in and beat him up. So then all that power instantly transfers to the villain. However, you don't have that in this movie because you do have Megamind showing that he's, you know, capable of stopping bad guys and how badass he is with his gadgets but when they introduce the doom syndicate they're not fighting megamind and beating him up they do beat him up later in the movie but like i said that's later so we don't have that initial impact you understand the second way is a villain's intro can be built on prior actions and this is what i felt like they should have done with this movie because this could have been awesome where you build up the doom syndicate instead of just having them be in this room and then introduce them all through exposition saying like hi my name is this this is what i do hi it feels like a kindergarten meetup session the first day of school where you're like, my name is Enzo. I'm a boy. Instead, what they could have done is rather showing us them talk in that room is not show them at all and show them like the Doom Syndicate break out of prison and then show like news of the Doom Syndicate run rampage through this city. The Doom Syndicate unstoppable force and just slowly build them up to this like unstoppable force of nature that's coming for Megamind. That would have been cool, but they did not do that. And the third one is a villain's intro can be built upon hatred and its unforgiving nature. Now that one's a little bit dark, especially for an animated movie 
be geared towards kids so I'm not gonna even go into the third one so out of those three they did not nail any of those points and I just feel like it was a very basic boring intro to the villains so it did not have a good impact in the movie the second thing that I didn't like about this movie is the introduction of this new character I know you have to add new characters into a sequel but I'm here to watch Megamind I don't really care about this other person and she's not interesting she's just supposed to represent like our generation that is like tech savvy and obsessed with social media and I just find it to be annoying and very lazy writing there's no creativity there it's just low-hanging fruit like oh what's happening nowadays let's just put that into the movie so it feels like it's relevant because there is a scene later on in the movie where she gives that pep talk and this is where this character could have been interesting right because she talks about how she was an outsider how she was picked on she was made fun of and it's like yeah but how why would I care as an audience member I haven't seen any of this it's just coming out of nowhere but what if at the beginning of the movie they built up that character where we saw her in school getting picked on and made fun of and bullied or made an outsider in like a sports game or something and then her use Megamind as an idol and someone to look up to that would have made that character more interesting but obviously they had none of that build up and so that speech really has no value to the audience you understand and last but not least as a Will Ferrell fan as a fan of the first Megamind it's hard to get past the new voices of Megamind because it's just not the same I don't think they did a bad job I don't want to give hate towards them and I think that the banter was okay in the movie but it's just not the same and that just may be the nostalgia factor that just might be I grew up with them and I just only see them as Megamind which I feel like is wrong but at the end of the day Megamind is Will Ferrell or Will Ferrell is Megamind and it's just hard to get through those new voices maybe some people can and they will enjoy this movie more but for me it does count as a negative towards this movie that's just my opinion so that's my review of the movie i think it's forgettable it's not memorable in any way there's no iconic one-liners i think the villains suck the new character I don't care about and it's just not the same when Will Ferrell is not voicing it so those are the three main points for me let me know what you guys think down in the comments below did you guys enjoy this movie do you guys want to see a possible third movie because that's the one thing I did like about the movie was that end credit scene I don't know about you guys but I love villains in animated movies and I think this movie had terrible villains but that last scene I love that villain that Mars attack looking brain villain I think has potential I think he looks super cool but that's just my pre personal preference maybe you guys think he looks stupid but i think there's potential there for a third movie they can clean up their act he could be the leader of them so it could be like a clear villain we can focus on let me know what you guys think i think there's potential there but maybe not anyways give this video a like subscribe if you're not already and i'll catch you guys on the next one peace